Be familiar with the Gulf of Tonkin incident. There were two American destroyers that were fired upon. The ship that you see in the back is the USS Maddox. There was also the Turner Joy that was also fired upon. And the question is, where did it take place? Was it in Vietnamese waters or was it in international waters? Well, the U.S. said it was in international waters, and therefore they passed the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution on August 7th, 1964. What it does is it basically gives Congress's war powers the right and the power to declare war, and it gave it to Lyndon Johnson, which he uses to escalate the war in Vietnam in stages. And so you see that in North Vietnam, the plan was not simply to go and invade because they did not want to bring China into the war. And plenty of people backed Johnson. They were for it. He had lots of advisors telling him, though, however, if we get too involved in Vietnam, then it's going to be tough to get out of there. But Johnson remained steadfast. We've got to support South Vietnam and their troops fighting against the Viet Cong. Now, the one year I want you to be familiar with is the region of 68 to go into 69, because you see that there were over 500,000 soldiers that were sent to Vietnam. I asked the question in class, what does that imply? It should imply that if you have to increase your soldiers that by that many people, that the war might not be going very well. And so what you see going on in places like Quezon are these massive bombing campaigns, huge bombing campaigns that last weeks and weeks. But the one that I want you to be familiar with the most that's going to last going into years, and that is Operation Rolling Thunder, where you have gigantic B-52 bombers dropping massive loads of, of bombs on North Vietnam. Now, we don't want to invade them because we simply don't want to have the Chinese come in. And so bombing seemed to make a little bit more sense. So the question is, um, what types of people do get sent to Vietnam? And we'll study that more later on. But we're talking thousands of people that are sent over there. And they're very young, too. Average age is about 19 years old. So you've got teenagers over there fighting. How does the U.S. fight this war? They do it using napalm, kind of a jelly gasoline. It looks like it's dropped out in canisters, and then the fire that it causes just kind of rolls and burns everything in sight. One of the most infamous pictures from the Vietnam War is Napalm Girl. And when this picture gets out in the newspapers and the media, it gives this kind of anti-war feelings, resentment. When people are looking and thinking to themselves, wow, we're, we're bombing children and children are getting burnt by napalm strikes. The other thing that we're using is Agent Orange. It's a chemical. It's a defoliant. So what it does is it, it basically kills leaves and, and trees and limbs it, so that we could look at down in the forest, in the jungles, and be able to see locations a little bit better. The problem with it, even in modern day, is it causes all kinds of deformities and, and so lots of health issues that are involved with it. And I showed a video on how that works also. But because the Vietnam, Vietnamese simply did not have technology, did not mean that they were behind. They built traps. They also had tiger attacks that happened, although they didn't plan those, of course. But Vietnam was just a strange land, strange area. To, to get involved with. You also have tunnel rats looking in the Coochie tunnels there. And then also they were able to do well because they used the Ho Chi Minh Trail, which was their supply lines. Some of it, sometimes it went through Laos and some people even ventured over into Cambodia. All right, I hope that that was helpful. Let me know if you have any more questions.